concerning prayer in the name of Jesus God that our hearts will be stirred up that Lord God that we will put those things to use in the name of Jesus God that our senses in the spirit will be sharpened oh God that we will be able to pray those things God that are in the in the heavenlies oh God to pray them down into the earth realm God in the name of Jesus and we thank you for doing it even now we give you glory we give you honor God we magnify you today God in the name of Jesus for moving in our midst we give you glory tonight God Hallelujah. Because your word declares that the entrance of your word brings light. So God, we speak and we declare God light and illumination understanding right now. God, in the name of Jesus, we declare God, even in our midst tonight, father, that your will will be done, that our understanding would be enlightened in the name of Jesus. We come against every spirit of darkness. We come against every spirit of misunderstanding. We come against, oh God, those things that aren't clear. God, and we ask you that you would open up our understanding. We ask you, God, that you would cause us to have ears to hear what your spirit is saying oh God in the name of Jesus that you will mobilize us in prayer that you will stir us up God in the name of Jesus that even as we come before you Lord in prayer that you will begin to deal with our hearts that you will allow God the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you to rest upon us father in the name of Jesus God speak to our hearts God even as we pray speak to us God with clarity oh God in the name of Jesus even as we begin oh God to seek your face tonight God even as we sit and learn of you tonight God in the name of Jesus father we bless you right now we give you glory we give you honor we magnify you oh God we pray for every person that's on the line tonight God that you would move in our midst every prayer request we already have everything that we have submitted to you and committed to you we thank you for aligning our lives for aligning our children for aligning our spouses for aligning our jobs for aligning our resources God in the name of Jesus and our finances everything that we have need of we command it to line up with your will in Jesus name that everything that we oh God have put our hands to that you will get the glory out of it oh God in the name of Jesus and father we bless you that even as the word goes forth tonight God in Jesus name that you will put your word in all of our mouths that we will come before you with what we hear in the name of Jesus that we begin to decree a thing father even for those oh God that we see that are in need that God that we will begin oh God to pray for those that are sick that we will call out God those oh God that are in need in the name of Jesus and that we will begin oh God to pray them through that deliverance will come oh God on their behalf God that healing will come oh God on their behalf that strengthening oh God will come on their behalf oh God in the name of Jesus and Father we bless you for it right now we magnify you we give you glory God we give you honor we exalt your name because there's nobody else beside you God that is worthy you alone God are worthy of praise you alone God are worthy of glory you alone God are worthy oh God to be lifted up oh God in the name of Jesus and we bless you tonight we exalt you tonight in Jesus name and we pray for every person God that is on the stream tonight that is able to hear the word every person that will hear it on tonight we pray God that you would open up their understanding that their understanding would be fruitful God that their prayer life would be stirred up God in Jesus name God that you would cause them God to have ears to hear that this word would be on time that this word oh God would hit them where they are in the name of Jesus God and cause them oh God to come up oh God in their prayer life oh God that they will get on their faces before you God and not neglect Neglect, oh God, their time in your presence in the name of Jesus. And we just give you praise and honor. We thank you, hallelujah, for all that you're going to do. We thank you for speaking. We thank you for, oh God, even this opportunity, God, to come together to hear your word. We bless you tonight, oh God, hallelujah, for your word, oh God, that it is already settled in heaven, oh God, hallelujah. We thank you tonight, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, that you already know, oh God, what we stand in need of. And we come and we lay those needs, oh God, at your feet. We come to you, God, hallelujah, trusting in you God for bringing everything into alignment tonight God in the name of Jesus God we thank you and we bless you we thank you God that hallelujah we already have everything oh God in you hallelujah because your word declares that the fullness of the Godhead is in you Jesus so we thank you that everything that we have need of everything that we could ask for everything that we could desire it is already in you God and I pray that our desire oh God will be stirred up that we would desire more of you God hallelujah more of you in prayer more of you God through your word more of you God as we fellowship with one another more of you God as we sit oh God in your presence and receive of you God as you impart into us oh God in the name of Jesus and Lord we honor your name today God 
Hallelujah. We give you praise, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for bringing us all, oh God, to the place of intimacy. God, that anything that's in our life that's not like you, anything, God, that we've come in agreement with that's not like you, that you will separate us from it, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Anything, Father, that stands in the way of you moving in us and through us, anything, Father, that hinders our walk with you, God, we ask you to excise it from our life in the name of Jesus. Purify us, sanctify us, God, in the name of Jesus. Cause us, God, to live, oh God, as unto you in Jesus' name, that we will live, oh God, a set apart life, that we will live, oh God, as those that belong to you, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you today, God, hallelujah, for deliverance in our life. We thank you, Father, for delivering us from everything that's not like you, every thought that's not like you, every behavior, God, every relationship, every mindset, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, God, from every habit, God, that you're going to deliver us from, God, that's not like you. We thank you today, Father, for moving in our midst. We thank you, Father, because there's nothing too hard for you. You are still a deliverer. You are still a savior. You are still a healer. You are still, oh God, hallelujah, Jehovah Jireh. There's nothing too hard for you, and so we bless you even now. We honor you, oh God. We exalt you, oh God. We give you praise. We give you glory, hallelujah, for all that you're doing in us, God, and all that you're going to do. We bless you, God, and we call it done. Hallelujah, God, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you thanksgiving, oh God. Come on, let's give God praise. Let's magnify him because he's worthy. Hallelujah. Let's exalt the Lord because he's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be glorified. Give him glory tonight. Hallelujah. Give him praise on tonight. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be glorified. Hallelujah. We thank you tonight, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory, oh God. Yes, Jesus. We give you glory tonight, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you glory. We give you glory. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We bless your name. Hallelujah, God. We bless your name. We bless your name. We thank you, Father, that tonight, hallelujah, God, even as we come to the last of this lesson, that tonight, God, that you will seal our hearts with this word in the name of Jesus. We give you glory for it right now. Hallelujah. We exalt you, oh God, even now. Hallelujah. Thank you for the spirit of God, for the Holy Ghost teaching, oh God, in this place. Thank you for letting your spirit, oh God, have free course tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we glorify you for it right now. Hallelujah. We give you honor tonight, God. Hallelujah. And we bless your name for it, oh God. Hallelujah. We magnify you. We exalt your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. We thank God tonight. Amen. For the Bible study. We thank God. Amen. For allowing us to come together to touch and agree in prayer. Amen. And prepare for this word on tonight. Amen. And so because of our change of venue. Amen. And the change of how we're doing things on tonight. Amen. We will. Amen. Teaching will go on until about 845. Hallelujah. Amen. So we won't be until exactly nine o'clock because you got an extra 15 minutes. we really got an extra hour. Praise God. Hallelujah. A little bit more like an hour hallelujah amen so um amen um so we really want to i really wanted to take this to an hour if we really could so 8 45 is a little extra but so you know let's let's say 8 30 8 30 amen so you can go to 8 30 amen so that you can amen be able to expound on the word amen and share amen so on tonight amen, at this time we turn it over amen to our teacher on tonight so that she can carry the teaching amen on our effective prayer continuing that amen god bless you amen amen we thank god for everybody being on the line tonight amen we thank god for everybody assembling together in our hearts and i thank god for the prayer on this Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm just so thankful, amen, for being, amen, be able to finish our teaching on tonight, amen. We are on page two on the lesson on how to pray, read the word, and I just briefly want to be able to recap, amen, because we had a little light, um, I want to say homework, um, last week up on um, making our list, amen, on how to pray, read the word, amen. And we went over the two broad categories of truth related to pray, reading the word, amen. And you'll find this on the first page of the lesson under letter E as in elephant. And um, those 
broad categories we were talking about were scriptures that focus on promises to believe in God's word and scriptures that focus on exhorting us to obey. Amen? Amen. And I just wanted us to be able to um, categorize in that some scriptures, amen, so that we can have foundation, so that we can have actual word and, and scripture in our prayers, amen. And with those categories, scriptures that declare that God loves, forgives, leads, protects, or provides for us, amen, would be in the category of two, uh, scriptures on promises to believe in God's word. And then the second broad category would be scriptures that focus on exhorting us to obey, amen. For example, um, using scriptures that command us to bridle our tongue, to serve others, to give time and money to God. Amen? Amen. And I just wanted to be able to, um, you know, just go over and share and see any examples that, um, you know, you all had came up with. And some of the examples, amen, that I had went through and went over and found very, very useful, amen, um, were scriptures, um, as we speak, um, Isaiah 55 and 11, amen, and it reads, So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, amen. Um, also, expounding upon, um, if we ask anything according to your will, you hear us, and because you hear us, we have whatsoever it is we ask according to your word. Mm -hmm. You can find that in First John chapter 5, um, verses 14 through 15. Amen. Amen. And then just as an example of a scripture um, for us to, things for us to work on in ourselves, things for us to obey, um, would be Psalms 141 and 3. Amen. And um, it reads, to set a guard over my mouth, Lord, keep watch over the door of my lips. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, these are prayers. These are actual foundation scriptures that we can use to, in our prayers. Amen. To lead and guide our prayers. Amen. And also to have foundation for us to stand on. Um, we did go over and discuss in the first lesson how when we go before him with the right mind, with the right heart, with the right spirit. Amen. And we get into that intimate time so that we break through to that intimacy with God. Amen. That the Spirit will continue to lead us on things that we should be praying for, amen, because even in his word, it says that the things we know not even to pray for, the Spirit will make us for us, amen. So um, even the things that we have on our lips, we know that those are tools and that we use, amen, in our prayer time, but not necessarily stringent and rigid, amen, to a schedule of our prayer, amen? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, amen. amen, amen. So, um, Continuing on, amen, to our lesson, I want us to be able to pick up on letter G, and I do think that this on page two, this will be a little brief recap, but we um, understand that we actively dialogue with God mm -hmm. by praying truth back to him that exhort us to obey his word, amen? First, we commit ourselves to obey God in the specific way forth in the biblical passage, make declarations of resolve to obey the word as you read passages about obedience. For example, to declare, I set my heart to love you and obey with, and obey you with my speech, my time, my money. Or I set my heart to love you like David, to endure hardship like Paul. Amen? Mm. And those are prayers, amen, that you pray from the desire of your heart. Amen? We um, also talked about in our first lesson going through with, with examples and patterns in Scripture, amen, to bring back. Remembrance God's word and his works, amen, that he did before for others, they're not just Bible stories for us. Those are examples and patterns, amen, for us to follow, amen, and that examples and patterns of his love, of his forgiveness, of his steadfastness, of his providing, amen, amen. So we see on letter A, when the, when the Lord exhorts the bride in Psalms 2, Chapter 2, verse 8 through 10, to arise in order to follow him to the mountains, leaving the comfort zone behind. Take time to speak the intent of your heart to obey this passage. These sweet resolutions to obey will strengthen our heart. Amen? And amen. we also... Um, we also learned about the importance, amen, of, of breaking into intimacy, amen? Prayer is not burdenous, 
to us, but it's an intimate time when we begin to grow, amen, and expand the many facets of our relationship, amen, the position of us, amen, in relationship to the Father as a son, and our position in relationship to him, amen, as, as a bride, amen, that we understand, amen, that that there are many facets to that relationship, amen? amen. And that intimacy is involved, not just the, the inheritance of a son, amen, but the intimacy of a relationship, amen, between the bride and the bridegroom, amen? Amen. Amen. So um, I want to go down to number two, where it says, second, we ask God to empower us to obey a particular truth seen in Scripture. Ask God to help to give you wisdom motivation, and power to obey in specific areas. For example, you can pray, Father, help me to love you, to bridle my speech, to use my time and money in full obedience. Father, strengthen me by your grace to love you like David. Amen? Amen. Example A says that when the Lord exhorts, when the Lord exhorts the bride in Psalms 2, 8 through 10, to arise in order to follow him to the mountains, leaving the comfort zone behind. Take time to specifically ask the Lord to empower your heart to obey this passage. Father, lead me away from temptation. Amen? And that's the scripture we can find in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 13. Or another example is to deliver me from the works of the evil one, such as John 17 and 15. Amen? And I just want us to, to be able to understand, amen, that, that we have a whole entire book, not just of promises, amen, but, but things and desires for our hearts to be able to pray on. And foundation scriptures, amen, for us to be able to expound upon during our time of prayer, amen. So it's not just supplication, 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 give me, do this, do that, amen. We know that even prophetic Prophecies are contingent upon obedience, amen. And these are things that we can work on and prepare ourselves because we know it's only by the grace of God and the strength of his spirit that we're able to, to move and, and, and continue on and be strengthened and encouraged, amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So going on to letter H, we see that two ways to focus our mind in seeking God, that God on his throne, and we find that in Revelation chapter 4, and God in our throne. Spirit, amen. And we understand how important it is to go before Him, amen, with the right mindset, with the right spirit, amen, amongst us. And um, in Scripture, we find that in Second Corinthians chapter thirteen and verse fourteen, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, amen. So we see right there that there's a command, there's a fellowship. When you fellowship, you are in relationship. You are taking time. Amen. You are receiving and it's a relationship. Amen. You receive impartation. You receive um, when, when you fellowship, you're receiving something that's feeding into your spirit, into your body, into your mind. Amen. So we fellowship with the Holy Spirit. He, we're allowing him to feed into our spirit. Amen. And out of his heart, or the belly in the King James Version, will flow rivers of living water. as found in John chapter 7 and verse 38. And these are just examples that we can um, set our mind upon seeking God. Amen? We know that we can do this through, through worship. We can do this through praise. Amen? And there are prayers, declarations, amen, and decrees that we make, amen, during that time. And that's the time that we should rest in the presence to receive, amen? That's the time, amen, when when we're worshiping, amen, and whether that be with music. Um, in the first lesson, we, are, we covered the importance of music and, and song, amen, to bring us to that place of worship, amen, to bring us to that place of intimacy, to transcend our mind and our spirit beyond where we are when we start in prayer and take us to that height and level where we can meet and commune and fellowship with him. Amen? Because we can't do that at the place that where we start at. You've got to travel outside of yourself. Amen? And I'm not talking like, ooh, you know, we're going to a spooky place or anything like that. I'm talking about removing outside of your carnal mindset, removing yourself out of your daily burdens, your daily things, the 
regular things in your mind and setting your mind and your spirit in a place to fellowship and commune with the Holy Spirit in prayer. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Um, and so when we go to letter letter I, it sees that, that they that linger in God's presence. In dialoguing with God in the Word, take time to linger as you speak slowly to God. Include declaring your love and praise, worship, praying with your spirit, and being quiet, sitting still, being able to receive that download. Amen? And that's the time that, that we want to be able to, to, to commune and receive that impartation, receive the download of his spirit, amen, and this is this is done during your time, amen, once you break into into that place with him, that place of intimacy, amen, once we've gone beyond, amen, the press, amen, to dwell in that place of fellowship with his spirit during prayer, amen, amen, y'all let me know if I'm going too fast, amen, I don't want to rush through it, or just assume, amen, that we all know, you know, where I'm at and, and what we're doing. But um, I do want, want to hear y'all feedback. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. So lingering in the pres in God's presence. Amen. So that if we just don't rush in and, and ask for what we want, we supplicate, supplicate, and, and get up, and then you're done. You haven't received anything during that time of fellowship, amen. We understand that even um, in the beginning of time, amen, with Adam's fellowship, with God in the garden, amen, that that was an appointed time and appointed place, amen, and they fellowship together. They look forward to that time, amen, and that's how, how we should prepare our hearts and our minds to go in and enter that time and enter into that presence. That should be the place that we rest, amen, and, and receive from God. We prayed, amen, we pressed in, we, we, we transcended beyond, amen, we've gotten to that place with him, and it does us no good to get there, shout him out, shout him down, and not receive his instruction, not receive his direction, not receive what we supplicated for. It does us absolutely no good to get to that place, to get to that time, to get to that intimacy with him, and and. and and not rest in that place, not, um, you know, receive that, that impartation into our spirit and receive what we, what we pressed in for. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. You go in with an expectancy and, and, and that's the place that we should be. Amen. Confident in, in the state that his word is going to accomplish everything that we set it forth to do. However, amen, he wants to commune with us. He wants to fellowship with us. And especially, amen, when we talked about purposing time and purposing a day and, and purposing, amen, and a block of time to fellowship with him, he's just as excited as we are. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. we should be even more excited, amen, to be in that place, to get to that place with him. Amen? Amen. We understand that journaling can occur, amen, on letter J, I'm on page three at the top. You can take time to record thoughts and prayers as you pray read through scripture. This helps us capture the truth that the Spirit gives us and to grow in our prayer dialogue with God. We talked about that pray reading um, increases our vocabulary with God. It gives us um, things that even as as we recite them back and forth, amen, as they are a spiritual guide and a spiritual lead for us to go forth in prayer, that it's also, um, it will increase your vocabulary. This is the word being hidden in our heart. These are our foundations that we stand on, amen, and promises. We know that if you promise your kid something or someone promises us something, we, hey, you know, they can say they're going to do something for us on Friday, Thursday night. We reminding them. We mm -hmm. ready. We coming back every. Remember you said we were going to do this. <laughs> Remember, you know, this, this, and this. Putting you back into remembrance of your word. The same thing occurs, amen, with us praying without ceasing. Of us standing on God's word. Of us decreeing and declaring and affirming. On us pray reading the word, amen. It brings God back into remembrance of his word, of his promises, of his work, amen. Amen. And, and it's. It, it's also part of our worship to him, amen, to esteem him, amen, 
and to bring him back into not that he needs to be remembered of anything, but it, it esteems God and, and and I know for me, uh, just bringing back a man to remembrance brings me to a very humbling place. It brings my spirit to a place, posture, and position, amen, that 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 I can reference even the more of, of exactly what what I'm doing and where I'm at, amen, to, to, to recall his mighty hand over my life. Oh, God, how you have kept me. Oh, God, how, how you have brought me out just as you did the children of Israel. Oh, God, how you have delivered me from this, that, and the third. Oh, God, how could that not be humbling to us? How could that not place you in a in a place and posture? And it brings you out of the thought of yourself. It brings you out of the burden of yourself mm-hmm. and everything that's just occurred to you. Dwelling on the goodness of God in your life. Dwelling on the goodness of, 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 of those things that, that he has done out of love, out of compassion for us. Woo, God. That right there. Amen. Amen. So moving on to journaling, amen, that when we pray, read the word, amen, he will lead and guide us through scripture, and and even when we pray for wisdom and revelation, amen, when you pray, read the word, it'll bring a new enlightenment to the word that you're reading, it'll bring new revelation, it will bring new application, amen, to, to, to the things that are going on in your life, amen, it'll bring clarity and direction, when you pray, read the word, it God will lead you to to a certain scripture, to a certain passage, amen, and sometimes it's just even a a repetition of a word, and we talked about this last week, um, getting a concordance, getting a lexicon, amen, to bring true revelation to the scripture by by defining, getting to the true root of of a word, amen, and it could be what we think is is an everyday word, amen, and to profit, our profit dictionary, amen, and just even bringing the, the, the true translation of a word from its Greek root, from its Hebrew root, amen, and, and seeing its translation throughout Scripture, seeing its application throughout Scripture brings revelation, brings knowledge, brings wisdom, brings understanding, amen, and it makes that Scripture and that word applicable to your life, amen, and when we just leave ourselves to be one-dimensional, it, it, it it leaves it flat for us. We understand that when we read um, scripture and and the word during, during different times in our lives and during different times, um, even whether we're fasting or not, it brings different application and different enlightenment to us during that time. The same thing happens when you pray, read the word, because the spirit, amen, will bring light and direction as you pray, read the word, amen, and it will correlate one verse of scripture to another verse of scripture and lead and guide you and show you, amen, even how to pray for a situation. It will bring application, amen, and foundation to a situation that you're going through or that you can minister to someone else to give them revelation and word to stand on, to show them a different promise. Amen. Or a different deliverance that he has given to people through scripture. Amen. To be able to be applicable in their life at a time. Amen. 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 So we understand that when you pray the word in spirit and in truth, you and the spirit work together to provide you with a tailor-made teaching in the word. Amen. Amen. And in 1 John chapter 2, verse 27 it'll read that the anointing which you have received from him abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things amen and that that will show us amen that when we pray read the word amen it it brings new revelation amen to a particular situation in our lives amen so allow the word amen even as we read even as we we're praying amen um, and he leads and guides you to a scripture, amen, to be able to read through that with new eyes, with a fresh spirit, with an awakened spirit, amen? amen. Because God can be speaking to us. It's not always that we that you hear an audible voice or a, a physical touch or move, amen, but God is awakening you, amen, even through scripture, amen, even through pattern, amen, even through examples to show us, amen, 
what we should, a, a new way of something, or we dig out in the word and we see something that we didn't see behind the, the, the scene a time before. Or you'll be able to, to, um, to receive that new definition for a word and be like, wow, and it stretches and expounds the true heart and the true meaning behind what was really being said at a time that we probably couldn't see, that we probably couldn't even understand. So, I mean, it, it's important that, um, you know, we, we study with multiple resources or that you be able to, to hear and listen, amen, and be sensitive, amen. And God, when you're reading, it'll quicken you, amen, to turn over to this, to turn over to that, or just to be open and receptive, amen, to be able to, to relate your scriptures, amen, whether it be through a concordance, amen, or through a... Um, through an accordance, I'm sorry, um, to be able to relate scriptures that God is speaking while we're pray reading the word. So moving on to uh, before you go to the before you go to the other section, can I just add something to what you were saying about journaling? Okay. Okay. Um, I wanted to add to what you're saying about journaling because journaling is very important while you are. Uh, meditating on the word while you're spending time in prayer um, and again we were emphasizing these are just tools that you can use it's not a law it's not a rule but these are just things that are helpful to you as you come up with an outline for you to be able to pray you know what I'm saying and so journaling helps because you get to write down those things that you get impressions about in in prayer those things that God is speaking to you and then even as you are um, setting out those specific points for you to pray about, you know, as you go through each of those points, maybe God begins to quicken something to you. And so as the Lord begins to quicken things to you, you need to write those things down, you know, as you're journaling, let's just say, for instance, you, um, like we, we, and we always quoting from that verse of scripture that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, you know, that's from Ephesians chapter one of verse 17 through 19. And so let's just say, for instance, you take that verse and you pray that verse and under each of those points for that verse, let's just say you, you, you only get to one part of the, vo the verse and you know, you start praying about the latter end of the verse that says that you may know what is the hope of his calling. And then you start praying about God help me to understand understand help me to see what the hope of your calling is God revealed to me what the hope of your calling is and then God begins to speak to you as you are praying that you need to journal that stuff you need to you need to you know write those things down because those are things that God is imparting to you as you are praying as you are meditating on the scripture as you are praying the word back to him the spirit of God will begin to deal with your heart about different things and 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 even there are times that God will give you things to even share with other people so it's important to take that time while you're journaling so that you can take the words of the Lord and the impressions that God has given you and the things that you are feeling an unction concerning while you're in prayer, write those things down. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, uh, Minister Davidson, I were talking earlier today about how sometimes God just speaks to us and it's not always, you know, followed by thus saith the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it's things that God gives us while we're in prayer or we could be in conversation with someone and then things God just begins to speak and reveal or whatever the case is. You need to learn how to write those things down. Journaling is important. It's important because there are times that God speaks to you, you know, and if we're talking about putting God in remembrance of what he has said, it's yes, what he has said in his word, but also prophetic words that he has spoken to us. So if we journal those things that when he speaks to us, we can always go back and say, Lord, you said, you know, and, and then it reminds me of what Paul told Timothy that he said, you know, that he should remember those, those, you know, those prophecies that were spoken over him that by them he might war good warfare well how was he going to war a good warfare if he can't remember what was said to him we need to write that stuff down go back to god and say lord you said these are you know use those things as points for prayer you know or or things that that can guide you into your prayer and sometimes i know getting started is the hard part but if we would take our time and just slow down it's not about rushing just slow down and just let god begin to deal with you let him speak to you and just begin to write those things down and before you know it you're gonna look back and you got a whole book 
filled with things that God has shared with you, revealed to you through the word, things that you felt an unction for, that you felt impressions about, things that you know you know that God was dealing with your spirit about, and 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 then you get to go back and pray over those things again, or even remind yourself, you know. And you know what things God has already spoken to you. So don't forget the importance of journaling. It is essential, especially if you are a prophet and God gives you prophetic words or you have the gift of prophecy. It's important for you to be able to journal because you want to be able to share, you know, those things maybe at a later date. You never know if God has given you a word for the future or whatever. And you'll be able to have that as a reference to go back to. So amen. Thank you for that, Apostle, because that's definitely something I had to learn. Um, you know, I didn't just naturally come out, you know, doing it. That's something I had to teach myself and something I had to learn to do. And and for that very reason that you spoke about, amen, that's good training, that's good teaching. Excellent, excellent, excellent for us all. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. Amen. And so um, moving on to um, letter number two, number two, examples of pray reading the word. Amen. And section A states, Jesus promises to, re to reveal the Father's personality to us as the way to impart love in us from God. And I'm going to read John chapter 17 and verse 26 from the ESV. And it says, I made known to them your name. And I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. Amen. And so as an example, we can pray. I thank you for your commitment to declare and reveal the Father's heart to me to release more. And you can pray. I thank you for imparting your love to my heart. Please release more. And these are examples, amen, of, of actual um, prayer things of actual prayer statements that we can make during our prayer. Amen? And God promises to show his power to those who are loyal to him. Pray. I thank you. Committing to show yourself strong in me. Release it. I set my heart to be loyal to the spirit's leadership in all that I do with my speech, my eyes, my actions, time, and money. Help me to walk this out. Amen? And we know that that is part of, of, of a prayer, amen, to obey things that we want to, to command for us to do, amen, and that we, um, and that we would, um, pray that thanking him to commit to show himself strong in us, to releasing things in our heart, amen, how we pray, amen, that we have a heart to be loyal to the spirit's leadership and all that we do with our speech, with our eyes, with our actions, with our time and our money, um, and reading 2 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse number 9, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. And those are things that we can pray, amen, we that we can pray to be loyal to him, amen, and stand on the promise that he's going to show himself strong on our behalf. That's the double combo right there. So we know that, that even praying that second half, that those are prayers that we can pray to, for, for ourselves, Lord, open our hearts to, know us, to be loyal, that I be steadfast in the things of you, that I be aligned to your way and your will, and you can go on with just the second half, amen, and then come back on the first half, amen, and stand on his promise to show, him, to show himself strong. Oh, thank God for his word. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And so we see in letter C that Jesus promises to manifest his presence to those who obey his commandments. He who has commandments who has commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Oh God. There's another one. Two part combo right there. Oh <laughs> You know, we pray right there that we that we keep his commandments, amen. We pray for those things, for that part for us to obey, that we love him with our whole hearts, with our whole minds, amen. And that we stand on the promise, amen, that he will love and manifest himself to. Oh, God, manifest yourself to me in my situation, God. Manifest yourself before me, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, that I be shown faithful and loyal to you. You can go. The Spirit will, will quicken you and swiften you quickly. Right there, 
said, there's so much right in, in one verse, amen, for us to be able to, to pray that word and go on right through that. And I love, amen, the fact that as we do that and as you, you do more and more of that, the, the Spirit will quicken you, amen, to bring back exact biblical verses, amen, and those are things and promises for us to stand on. Like I said, it increases our, our vocabulary. It increases, amen, our thoughts and expounds our mind, amen, it expounds our vocabulary to be able to, to increase our language to pray with God. We don't have to be using no long $20 words. Amen. But however, amen, we have his promises to be able to stand on. And as we stand on those and continue to recite those, amen, and, and we continue to, to, to bring those alive in us and speak those out in the atmosphere, you are commanding your atmosphere. Everything that his word, amen, can touch and hear and breathe has to line up to the name of Jesus. Woo! Amen. 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 So we see and let us see that Jesus promises to manifest his presence to those who obey his commandments. He who has commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. That's John chapter 14, verse 21. Pray, I thank you for committing to manifest, Lord, your presence to my heart. Release it more. I set my heart to keep and obey your word in my speech, in my time, in my money, Lord. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, help me to do this. And then you can pray. Note that the Father loves everyone in the sense of valuing, caring for, and pursuing them. However, he only loves the lifestyle choices, sacrifices, and fruit of those who pursue a hundredfold obedience. Amen? And we know that even prophecy is contingent upon obedience. Amen? For our hearts. So we have a, we have a whole list of things that we can continually pray for to help our, to help our infirmities, to help those things, Lord, that, that I lack, those things that I'm missing. Those are things that we can continually pray for, amen? We understand that, that it's not selfish for us to be able to, to pray for ourselves, amen, and intercede for ourselves, oh God, to reach out for ourselves first, amen? And even as we make intercession, and it's your heart as an intercessor to pray for those things for others, amen? And and that that's good too. But don't forget to put our life best on first. Do not forget to put your oxygen mask on first, too. That is important. That, that we make ourselves to be able to be sustainable as well also. So these are things that we can always pray for, for our own spirit, for our own prayer life. Amen. And letter D, we're called to obey the Spirit's leadership in what we look at. Pray. I set my heart to not look on anything that quenches the Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me to do this with consistency. Amen. We know it's not our desire to breathe the Spirit. There's a million things that we can pray on to, 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 to help our inner man, to help our spirit man, that we not breathe the Spirit, that we not quench the Spirit. Um, things that, that we know that we're missing. God, even the things that we don't know to ask for. Pray, pray about that. Amen. And we pray, I thank you for committing to manifest. Oh, I've already read that. So we can pray, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why should I look upon a young woman? We find that in Job chapter 31 and verse 1. We know that just going about our daily life, the things that we hear, the things we sub, we subject our spirit to, and we open ourselves up to, amen, just walking out our door and walking into the grocery store. Your eyes could be accosted by the magazine covers and, and anything that's going to pop out, scrolling through your timeline on Facebook, uh, you, you know, you never know what's going to come out and come looking at you. You don't know what's going to come on. And, and, and really, literally, I want to say accost your spirit. <laughs> You know, um, walking into, you know, different environments at work, um, even having to go about, even going to social services. You know, we, we are open and susceptible to those things, and it's that we should pray continually, amen, to, to not just guard our spirit as a defense, but that we be guarded and on watch to be able to discern, that our hearts and our spirit be open and receptive to be able to know what's going on around us, that we see things. 
thing in the spirit and not just with a naked natural eye. Amen. And that be our prayer. Um, even the, the we know that 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 we we strive to be holy and righteous and, and things and, and and that we all have deliverances, amen, that, that we work through, amen, daily and, and no matter on any side of the spectrum that, that may be, we know not one is greater than another. If God is delivering you to 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 whether it be from Cheetos or coffee, you know, whatever it is, you know, from, from even lust and lustful thoughts, amen, we know that these are things that we, that we should pray in our spirit for continually, God strengthen me, God help me, even as I go into this store, God help me to make right decisions, God help me to lead, lead a life of balance, God, oh Lord, help my spirit to be self-disciplined, you know, whether we go into a bakery, God help me to have, you know, self-discipline, God give me the strength to be able to say no, these are things that, 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 that are for real, for real, that are to our growth, to our maturity, to us getting to a new place and a new level. Um, we know even as prophets that we want to pray that we have some control, that we have control over our spirit, that we not, you know, be, be renegade and rebellious in any area of our life, that we be able to, to have control and be and command our spirit, amen, whether it be overspending, whether it be spending by, by emotional, you know, driven stress, and stresses in our life. These are things that we can always pray over. It's just, it just amazes me how we just, in a pickle, you know, anytime we get into a bind or a crunch, that's the only time that we can come up with things to pray for and we pray about that one thing. But there are continual things that we should be praying for and there are continual words and promises that we can pull on for that. You pull on the word to be able to do that. So we see that um, even at the bottom of the page, of page three, I will set nothing wicked before my eyes, that that be um, our prayer and our desire found in Psalm 101, verse three. Um, you know, that that be our desire. These are these are promises that we can stand on, amen, to build up our spirit, man, to burn our spirit, man, to grow and mature us, to take us from the place where we were last week or a month ago, those things that we were struggling with a, a month ago or a week ago, that, that next week we'd be strengthened and not find ourselves in that same place, in that same situation. Not saying that you won't ever struggle with it, but you got foundation to stand on. You got promise to stand on. You got word to speak into your atmosphere. You got word to speak into your environment. And that right there is an encouragement all in by itself. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we're on page four now, right now, and we're at letter E. And at the top, we are called to obey the Holy Spirit's leadership in our speech. God promises that our whole body, our human passion, will be bridled as we obey the Spirit in our speech. Pray, I set my heart to keep and obey your word in my speech. Holy Spirit, help me to do this with consistency. I like how that is, um, is added in there. Amen. Because even our desire to grow, to mature, to be um, consistent, to be dependable, that these be things that, that we grow and mature to, that they be foundation, that because we do it over and over and over again, it becomes dependable and it becomes consistent in us. Um, we, we're not looking for no hit or miss. Um, do it once, do it twice, but we want something that's foundation in us. We want something that's going to be consistent. We want to be consistent and dependable ourselves. As a verse in Psalms 141 and verse 3, set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Um, Ephesians 4, 29 and 30, let no corrupt word or Proceed out of your mouth with what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. That's right there. That's, that's a two-parter right there combo for us. If anyone does not stumble in the word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. 
all our love, all our cares, our desires. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body. It's set on fire, the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. We see that in James chapter 3, verse 2 through 6. Um, let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Psalms 19 and 14, do all things without complaining and disputing that you may be blameless. Philippians 2 and 14, in everything give thanks, do not quench the spirit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 18 through 19. Oof, y'all know that there's a whole lot of scripture right there about our mouth, our desires right there. Because God knows these are things that, that we all you know, work to work on and then on a daily basis. We know that even um, praying for the matters of the heart, amen, give me a clean heart, amen, and renew a right spirit within me because what's inside of you is going to come out of you. Amen. That's right. So, I mean, if you got nothing but negative things to say, you all, your mind is always set up on the, the negative, amen, and even we know um, that even cast your cares and your thoughts upon those things that are lovely, those things that are eternal. You can pray that. God, you know, I pray that. <laughs> that my mind is set on those things that are eternal in you, Lord, that even, you know, leaving your mindset to know that even the things of this world are just temporal. They're just for a moment. Amen. Can I say something for a moment? Sure, go right in there. Come on in. Mm -hmm. well, I was just going to just going to say that um, that was something that kept, that I kept hearing you, you know, say more than one time, even about how you know we got to put a you know a bridle at, to our mouth, to our lips. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it, it just it just you know uh, alerts us to be careful of the things that we speak out of our mouth. You know, you have to be very um, careful what you do speak, you know, and then just, you know, being a of, of something that even a population early, earlier is that what we project or speak out of our mouth is, is creating something. That's it's right. saying something. It's doing something. It's working something. So, you know, you have to be careful because what you say, you might not want to create that. Mm -hmm. You might not want to produce you might not want the, for that actual thing to happen, but because you spoke that, you can't go back and get it. That's Amen. right. That's right. So you, because you released that already, you know, with your negative self, with your bad attitude, with your bad disposition, with your momentary going through, we say things hastily and we are not thinking of before we speak. Mm -hmm. So we're, 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 we're asking and crying out to God for resolution and solutions and guidance and, and for him to show us the way. But he's showing us the way, but we're speaking contrary to the way that he's showing us. Mm -hmm. You're right. You're absolutely right. Okay, God, I know you said 95, but I'm going to take this back row, roof 17, because <laughs> I can get this. That's not the way he took you. That might be a lot what you can say or another option, but that's not the, that's not the way that he said to go. Mm -hmm. And I guess that goes with the instructions, you know, um, and, and, you know, even writing down those things and the things that we're meditating on and the things that we need to do or we need to follow through with the things that, that have become clear or that have become evident or have become things that, that are, you know, that's laid upon our hearts that we need to ask God and seek God regarding but then when he oh. says, go to five, don't stop looking at Route 17 or back road, you know, to Chicago because you know that way. I mean, that might be good, but that's not the way that he said go mm -hmm. this time, this season, this moment, you know. So how to, how to pray effectively, we want to pray according to his will. That's mm -hmm. why I, I think I even put it less even last week when you had made you had made mention about um set that set that set make a set time even to hear the Lord speak back. Mm -hmm. but, okay. Thank you for the day. Because day was a heck of a day. I j I got through it. Yeah, I'm over it. I'm done with it. I'm through. Okay, I gotta go to the next thing. Okay, but he was just to say something but I didn't make no time to hear what he had to say about it. That's right. I might have messed up all the time, but I would have never known that because I'd be here.
hear what he had to say. I thought I was just right all day. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're a thousand percent right. And I'm very, very, um, I try to be, you know, just as a tip, cognitive of, of all those scriptures about the heart and about the mouth, amen, and about things we speak and things we say, amen, because it's very important. And not that I get it right, amen, because I surely don't. Um, it's oh, it's oh, constant oh, work. Oh, what was that? Me too, amen. Me too. Amen. That's right. It's so important, and I take great um, um, pulling even on the word that says to study to be quiet. Oh, God, that's so important. Why would you tell us to study to be quiet? You know, that's important. Amen. And I take great reference to that. Amen. That, That it was important enough for God to, to speak for us, to, to you know, that that's something that we had to study to do. And I, and I, I always, you know, try to, to, you know, set the heart to be right, to set the mouth to be right. Amen. Because even in Jeremiah 17, there's the heart is, a, is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Yeah. You can understand it. Um, right. so, and, and even to set our position to come before him even with the right spirit. God, I got to pray for this heart. I got to pray for this mouth. I got to pray for this mind. I got to pray for this body. And it's so important as prophets, amen, that we be cognizant of anything we say all the time. And I know, you know, we as people in our flesh, we ain't always on the straight and narrow and do everything right. Like I say, you know, we flesh, and but that's no excuse, amen. It should be our desire to, to want it to, you know, glorify God in our speech, to want to glorify God, you know, even in this flesh. And it's my, my intent and my desire to want to bring glory to God, even in this nasty flesh. <laughs> you know, what can I do to glorify God in this? And I know, right. you know, but by the help of his spirit, amen, that I glorify and edify him. We know that our communication should be, should be edifying to others. If you always tearing people down, you always got something negative to say, you ain't never building nobody up. That's not even speech of a prophet. Amen. Amen. I mean, you can't never build nobody up. And, and it, uh, it brings me cognitive even to the scripture that the people prosper through the prophesied. Um, how do I find that? Okay. Um, you know that people prosper even through, you know, and, and we, we know the difference between a prophet and, and, and one who prophesies. Amen. But even your speech, that's why your speech is so important. The things you say, how you say it, how you deliver it. Amen. That's important, and that should be our desire, amen, to keep our communication clean. To um, And not that everything's going to be, you know, you can jelly beans and roses all the time. It's not, but it should edify God. You know, it should glorify God in, in the way that we carry out our speech. Amen. It shouldn't be our desire to have filthy, corrupt communication. Um, you don't have, we don't have to do that. As an adult, you don't have to do that. Amen. Well, I mean, I was going to say, even even that, when you said the corrupt communication, it, it well, you know, it, it, it what? It, it destroys what? Good good behavior. Right. It is. And it's deceitful. It, 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 you know, bad communication corrupts good manners. It sure does. So then you want to know, well, well, why they talk that way? Or why they sound like that? Or why they respond like that? Or what, what, what has happened? But then you're quick to know that, okay, you know what? I have to remove myself from certain environments. I have to remove myself and check myself. Okay, God, give me the willpower, the, the strength, the, the ability to remove myself from this because it's not producing anything good for me. Even complaining. Complaining. Um, what? Being disruptive. Um, and I, I can't pay this. I can't. I, um, God, I want to say, I can't say that. I don't, I don't like that. Because it brings the business it's divisive. That's going from here to there, getting this person on your side, so your story over here, and you know, doing that. It's divisive. It brings division. Um, it's murmuring and complaining. It says the word says, "Do all things without complaining." We know we can't even give to God unless we have a cheerful heart. We can't go to the Walmart and stand in the line because they only got two registers open without complaining. <laughs> you know? And in all things, you know, we can do without complaining. 
and, and grumbling, mumbling, and complaining, bring, it's disobedience. That's what it is. It's plain hey, hey. disobedience. Your spirit ain't right. These are things that, and these are foundations, these are scriptures that we can stand on, that we can pray for all the time. And that's just on, on a line and on, on, on mind and, and on bouncing our feet. Amen. Amen. Um, we see in letter F, God promises to save or deliver those who lay aside filthiness as they meditate on his word. Pray, I thank you for desiring to deliver my soul from filthiness in me. Please release it. I set my heart to lay aside all filthiness and implant your word in my heart with meditation and meekness. Please keep me to do this with consistency. Oh, God, I love that. There that goes again. You can throw with consistency on the back of anything. Because he knows we disobedient. Uh, we constantly, we got to subdue this flesh when? Daily. Daily. Amen. So in, even in everything that we do, it could be our desire to be consistent in those things of God. Um, that will pull back all that starting and stopping, all that procrastination. Um, it'll, it'll dissipate fear in your life. Um, because as you grow to be consistent, you'll grow confident in him. Your relationship in him will grow because you'll be seeing how he's carrying you, how he's growing, how he's manifesting promises in your life as we step out on faith in the Amen. things of him. Amen. And even so going going to feel, it edifies us. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Davis. No, no, I was even going back to how, you know, we were talking about, or how you were talking about, apostles talking about, you know, journaling or, you know, writing things down, like even prayer points of, you know, you know, things to pray about. And then to be able to go back and say, wow, because we, 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 we have busy lives and we're not even giving God the recognition and acknowledgement of the things that he has done for us. Because we're so undone that we're just stuck on, yet are still our undone, our done selves versus, but God, he really did something in this area right here, you know, and, and. So if you had written that down or you recognized it, took the time to acknowledge what the Lord has done in you so far, you have a, 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 a gratitude and know that prayer does work and that change does happen. I mean, it, it may not have happened. It, it may, that may not have, you know, produced something instantly, but it's working for our good. And you can see even when you, you know, as you write things down and you say, okay, God, can you help me with my on my job, or, you know, and then you go to work and a couple people got fired. The ones that really give you a hard time. Okay, well, Lord, I thank you. Okay, <laughs> or, you know, or, 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 Lord, can you help me with my finances? And either you get a raise or somebody sold the seed or, you know, some money appears some way to check your form, some, in form. You're like, well, Lord, I give you the praise. Thank you, God. What was you providing? I mean, but even going back over those notes and acknowledging what he has done, and it only took for you to acknowledge him and to take the time to to talk to him about these matters. Though he knows it, again, we have to open our mouths and just tell it back to him, give it back to him, you know, fill it with his word, give his word back to him. He said, prove me now, prove him now. And, and, and just watch him work, and it's just amazing because you'll see some things that were really you know, you might not be all the way done, but it was a whole lot worse. Lord, I ain't hurt nobody no more. I ain't cussed nobody out. I ain't killed nobody in a long time. Lord, I'm doing real good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know, that's because I'm talking to the right person now. Not all the rest of crazy people that I've been talking to that got as many issues as I do. Right. <laughs> And it helps us to mark time and seasons and shifts in our lives, too, as well. That journaling is very, it's very, very important. It's, it's, mm -hmm. It is very important. It helps work as a marker. Um, it helps us to mark um, not just times and seasons, but um, changes, growth, shifts. Oh, you're right. You're but we right. care. 
guilt in, in, in not being satisfied or that's not good enough or, you know, I ain't all the way done or I didn't arrive quite yet or whatever, that we don't even acknowledge the baby steps or the little adjustments or the little things that we alter for the betterment of our lives, for our own lives, like you said, ourselves. Like, well, God, I thank you for the change. God, you know I want more. I want to do better. I want to, you know, I want to grow up. I want to mature. But I thank you for this because I recognize that change has happened. And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta acknowledge you even for the change that already has happened. Mm. And it just drops into your prayer because you know the emphasis on this right here is real. And as you see yourself turning, you want to keep turning. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah. I, Amen. I just wanted to I wanted to go back because you were saying y'all you guys have brought up the journaling again. And one of the reasons why I always emphasize that and, and make it something that is, you know, especially for uh, those of us that, you know, have prophetic gifts. Um, and even as we're going into intercession and, and, and pulling that from the teaching on tonight about being able to write these down, you know, uh, especially if you are busy, especially if you have a lot going on, this helps you to keep perspective. When you are journaling, you write in this stuff down, you keep track with stuff. It helps you with clarity. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and not just that, if you set goals, you know, and you say, okay, God, this is what I want to do. It gives you, you know, something to be able to, you know, to keep a balance on what you're doing. You can see where you are, where you started, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, and, and how much progress you have made. You can go back and read, you know, maybe the beginning your, of your first journal and then maybe the end of maybe your third or your fourth journal and be like, oh my God, look at what things that the Lord has imparted and the things that God have, you know, uh, share with me. And so it, it helps you to even be able to mark your own growth. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so it's important that we take that time to sit down and record your thoughts and not just your thoughts, but those impressions and those things that God is given to you. Uh, because even as you're talking about praying these things about setting a guard over our mouth, you know, maybe there are things that God can be dealing with your heart about concerning, you know, and he may say to you, be on the lookout, be mindful of, you know, things that, that, that get you going, that press your buttons and you begin to write those things down. These are the things that press my buttons. These are the things, you know, that will cause me to, to lose control. You know what I'm saying? And so as you begin to journal those things because you're, you're bringing your thoughts together. It's keeping your perspective. You're, you're able to keep up with, you know, organizing your thoughts. You know what I'm saying? This is what God is giving you. This is what he's sharing with you. Then those things become prayer points in the end. Lord, these are the things that the enemy I, or, or even in my own flesh, not just the enemy, but things in my own flesh that always trigger me. Help me, God, so that when these things come, that I do not become a prey to these things. You know what I'm saying? And so that that, that's the stuff that, you know, you know, these, and, and this is not even us getting into the deep things of prayer. This is just the basics. We, we, we haven't talked about the types of prayer. We haven't talked about, um, the types of spiritual warfare, you know, and the levels of warfare. We ain't even got into that. This is just the basics of effective prayer, being able mm-hmm. to come along, uh, you know, uh, aside from our busy schedules and take time with God and, and, you know, begin our day or end our day, you know what I'm saying? And, and have a focus because there's so much going on and we need to be able to keep our perspective. We need to be able to, you know what I'm saying, know where we started and see where we're going. And then there's sometimes we think we know ourselves. But when we sit down and read our thoughts, you be like, oh my God, was I thinking that? Jesus, you know, boy, that must have been a rough week, you know, oh well, my God, that was a rough day, you know, and like, wow, these are things that, you know, God has been doing about, you know, and so, and then even when, when, when God begins to answer prayers, you need to put that down there. And, and record that. Why? Because if you go back and you read that God answered the prayer on a day that you was really having a rough day, on a day that your faith was feeling like it was down in the dumps and down in the muddy grubs, and you go back and you start picking up your journal and reading the things that God has answered, it's going to it's going to charge your faith. It's going to encourage you. It's going to spur you on. You know what I'm saying? And so there's so many reasons, great reasons, why we should take this time. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, to be able to 
Put these things down so that they help us. You know, put these in house. You keep a record of all the victories you won. Keep a record over, you know, the time that you felt like you was going to cuss somebody out. But you know God delivered you because you faced that situation. You know what I'm saying? And you didn't even have a desire. You didn't even feel a cuss word in your throat. You know what I'm saying? And you get to, Lord, I thank you that today was a victorious day. I bless you, God. Because what would have happened to me last year? Last year, I would have lost it. But this year, God, I see where you brought me from. I see what you have yeah. done for me. And so it's so, so, so good. You know, and then, and then even from that, those notes, those prayers, those things become teaching tools. And so, um, you know, then you'll find yourself teaching from what you've journaled because those things now have become lessons to you. Now they have become, you know what I'm saying, a book of 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 things that God has brought you over, their testimonies, you know, and, and because you've been journaling and writing about those scriptures and like things that we're reading about here on page four, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. And then God began to deal with you about what it means to meditate, what it means, you know what I'm saying, to actually let the words, meaning I'm submitting something in myself to allow the words that come out of my mouth. You know what I'm saying? I'm submitting my will to God's word so that those words that come out of my mouth are going to give him glory. You know what I'm saying? And so as you begin to write all of that down, whatever revelations God has given you, you can get up and teach from that. Because this is what God gave you in your prayer time. This is what he gave you in the secret place. This is what he gave you that now becomes a tool that blesses, encourages, you know what I'm saying? Spurs on and enhances the lives of other people, your brethren. You know what I'm saying? Because you begin to share with them. Those things that you have journaled about and now you're sharing them. Amen. 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 And then I was I was thinking about even like um uh, I was trying to touch on it a little bit, but even like from last last Bible study, you know, even talking about the promises of God, mm-hmm. you know, and just seeing how uh, you know, holding fast to our confession and not allowing, you know, the storm and the and yes. the and the rain and and the thunder, the lightning, you know, you know, all the things that life presents itself to remove us from trusting God, mm-hmm. from making us not, you know, lose heart and, and, and making us just become hopeless when we had so much hope. But, you know, if the Lord says it, then why aren't we able to stand right there? Yes, we're pushed. Yes, we bend. Yes, we kneel. But we still have to stand that his promises are sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And, and, and knowing that, okay, well, what did God promise you? Because y- your mind, your mind and your heart, your heart is hurt and your mind is discombobulated. You don't forgot. Mm-hmm. So even writing down his, that, okay, God, you said you were going to help me in this area. You said that you were going to bring me out. You said you were going to bring me through. You said you weren't going to let the waters overtake me. You weren't going to even let the, the stench of the, of, the, of the flames or the fire even consume me at all. Now, then I, it might going to be a residue upon me regarding these matters. I mean, if you, if you, you know, write these things down, it'll help you to remember because you can forget mm-hmm. in the midst of a storm. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're going to write, but what did God say? We forgot all about that. We forget all about that. Absolutely. But what happens, what strengthens us to hang on? What strengthens us to hang on? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because, like, you know, sometimes you, need, you can't even, you know, your words aren't, 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 aren't going to be uh, lavishing or, you know, eloquent. They're going to be like, huh, oh, he's going to get that loan and he's going to get that kind of help me. Exactly, because you you're not. It's it's not about having somebody that's going to edit your words. This is about you. This this is a record, really. Essentially, this is a record of your encounter with God. That's all it is. You, you're keeping a record, and 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 get this. 
the Bible tells us that 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 the angels of the Lord they are recording. They're watchers that are recording what we're doing. So you know, every time we come into the presence of God, you know, or whatever else we're doing in life, they're recording all all the deeds that we do. You know what I'm saying? So here it is. Now you have your own record of your encounters with God, your quiet times with God, the things that He has spent, you know, uh, uh, dealt with you about and spoken to you. You know, the things that you have been musing about. You know, things that maybe your ideas, your 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 visions, things that you have dreamed about, especially. If if you have dreams, you want to write that down, you know what I'm saying? So that God can uncover those things and begin to, you know, um, you know, what if it comes to pass? You have no record that you that you really had the dream and you know, you're like, oh my god, this is familiar to me. And I know, you know, I dreamed about this, and it's sometimes it's hard to remember all of the details. You know, so it's a right. lot of there's a lot of great reasons why, you know, and especially with these last verses of scripture that's here on page four because for all of us you know um we, we have the tendency to be quick you know quick on the draw with that tongue you know but one of the things that i i i love um one of the verses that is is um quoted here and from james chapter three verses two through six if anyone does not stumble in a word he is a perfect man also able to bridle his whole body or his human passions we, we we may be quick sometimes to try to get control of other people, but the most thing that we need to work on is controlling ourselves. We need to work on controlling ourselves. That that right there, that was Paul's way of saying, I mean, James's way of saying, stop focusing on other people and focus on working on you. We might feel like we're perfect. We might feel like we got all our I's dotted and all our T's crossed. But when your human passions rise up with our mouths, with our attitudes, with our mood swings, with our anger, with, you know, I'm tired. I don't feel like being bothered with our learning how to show love to each other, with our get up and go get in prayer when we much rather watch TV. You understand what I'm saying? When we learn how to control those human passions that drive us. You know what I'm saying? And able to, because once we control our inner man, then we'll be able to control our tongue. That's that's basically what he's saying. Control yourself and you'll be able to control your mouth. And so if we can do that, this is why this is why we can take this man and just run in prayer and pray for hours and hours and hours and never really run out of anything to say to God. Because if we understand how toe up our flesh is and, and and it is and we thank god for his goodness and his mercy that we could come boldly to the throne of grace to find find grace to help in the time of need glory to god we're happy about that you know but it's just yeah we gotta be able amen we gotta be able to come face to face with what our own proclivities are what our issues are what our weaknesses are what our what is it that drives us and when we can take these verses and say lord help me that i will bridle my whole body not just my tongue because my tongue is symptomatic my tongue is symptomatic about what's going on inside so if i could get if i can deal with that storm that's inside that thing that's in my mouth that's wagging around i'm gonna get control of that and so that you know we can concentrate with that in prayer you know and see Sit down and begin to write that stuff out and ask God, Lord, help me, help me, God, so that what's inside, it's not just my mouth, it's my heart, it's what's inside, it's the things that are, that are, 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 like we were talking about on Sunday, stewing in our own juices, you know what I'm saying, we, we got to deal with that, because what comes out of our mouth, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, so it's what's in us. That causes us to say, you know what I'm saying? Different things. When you're aggravated and you're frustrated because you had a long day at work, you're, it's easier for us to snap on people because we're aggravated and we're tired. We had a long day. People didn't do us right. There's something stewing inside. And in our mind, all I want to do is just go lay down and just have five minutes of quiet. I'll get that quiet time. I'm going to be all right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I gather my thoughts and do you're whatever. Right. So, amen. If, right. if we could do that. Amen. And that, that's true, Paul, because I can, I can recall on several occasions that I would stop for a second and I would like, if it's like, you know, not making an announcement, but inform my children, okay, let, you know, you just, 
you just either touched, massaged, annoyed, stared up. One of my triggers. <laughs> I got a trigger. <laughs> I like to take this time to ask you, please don't do that. Mm-hmm. Please don't do that. Mm-hmm. And it's not just for them. It's for me. Yes. Okay. Yes. They might catch it, but I'm going to get it ultimately. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, I don't want to go there. I don't want to say that. I don't want to do that. But it's that acknowledgement of, I got an issue. Yes. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Amen. 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 And I just wanted to be able to cover letter G. We almost there. Almost, almost. God promised that we are a new creature based on giving us the gift of God's righteousness. Pray, I thank you and I declare my trust that you have given me the righteousness of God. Please reveal it to me more by the spirit of revelation. I declare that all things are new and the old things of my guilt have passed away in your sight. Oh God, if anyone is a if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 21, for he, the Father, has made him, Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that he might become the righteousness of God in him. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 through 21, yet again, a thousand things we can pray for right there in that. Not just decreeing and declaring his work, but things we can honestly thank him for, things that we can stand on promises for and look forward in the future, things that we we can declare, amen, that we are new and all things have passed away. Yes. We can put those things behind us and set our focus on those things that are new. I'm a new creature in Christ. We don't have to believe the lies of the enemy, the replay of our mind, the replay of our history, amen, but we can declare oh, yes. those things, amen, and stand on God's truth. That we are new in him. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I hope and pray that you have gotten something out of this teaching. I just want us to be able to recap, amen, quickly those those truths, those foundations, amen, those three things, amen, that we can purpose to have practical, practical issues in developing a consistent, a consistent prayer life, amen. We know by purposing time, amen, that we set aside time with him, amen, and that we purpose, amen, in our hearts to, to, to have a set time, that that's a tool that we can use to better strengthen our prayer life, amen, to go on with a right view of God, amen, that that's going to be a tool for us to be able to use in, in, in purposing a consistent prayer life and, and, and compiling a prayer list, amen, to make a list of those things, those issues, amen, that, that while we're while we're here, we're, we're, we're meditating, amen, we can set aside a list, amen, to lead to God, to instruct us, amen, as the Spirit leads leads us into prayer, amen, but things to structure and outline our prayer time, amen? Amen. present, like you. Amen. Uh, that right there is going to help, amen. Even in developing our prayer list, amen, working through intimacy, petition, and intercession, amen, to, to go through the different, um, stages and time frames and like Apostle said, this is just the beginning. This ain't even got us into the different types of prayer. Amen. The different levels of warfare, the different realms of the of demonic warfare and things, um, the different uh, breakthroughs and, and levels of prayer for us to, to go and resound through. This is just the structure of 101. Things to get us to lay the foundation and then that we can build our house on. Things that we can um, that we can use and develop, amen, to, to, to take our prayer life from point A to point Z. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Amen. I'm excited. I hope, um, you know, that we have gotten something out of this. These are, these are lists. Please keep your teachings, amen, and, and refer back to them. These are foundations that we can always go back to, amen, and, and shore up some areas in our prayer time, in our prayer life, some things that for us to go back to, um, to where we, um, 
we where we always say go back to basics, amen. Sometimes, amen, in, in your life, amen, you gotta go back to the foundation, reshore up some foundation, amen, to build even higher and even stronger on. So these are tools, these are um teachings for us to keep and, and recover and go back over this list of prayer scriptures in here for us, amen, to start your list. Um, you're not confound to the specific scriptures or diaphragms um, that are listed in here. But this is good teaching. This is good and it's all-encompassing for us to have a good foundation and a good running start so that we can expound upon and elevate and run with it and just take our prayer lives corporately as well as individually to the next level. I'm excited. Amen. Um, any feedback from everyone on the floor tonight? Amen. Well, we thank God for those that joined us on tonight. Amen. And and I see we we see we have a couple people on the line with us. Amen. And so we thank God. Amen. So anyone that's on the line at this time, if you have anything you'd like to share concerning the teaching on tonight and what parts you heard, or if you had any questions or comments, you are welcome. Amen. To share at this time. Mm -hmm. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Well, I, Go ahead. Um, I'd like to say that, 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 that the teaching has been rich and very informative. And, you know, and even when you think about, you know, getting back to, to bases and, 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 you know, and, and, and the restructure of anything, you know, it's a blessing to know that God will rebuild us and help us to get ourselves together. Because a lot of times we may build around and about us, but we forget about ourselves. So like you talked about, you know, it's not selfish to pray for your, yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm, I've been so used of that where you can pray heaven down for the world, but then you haven't said nothing about you at all. Right. Well, God knows, God got it, God fixed it, God will move on, <laughs> God, God will do it all. You know, and I mean, and that could be a, my, this, that could have been just my belief system and, and just trusting that he's going to take care of me because he knows my heart. But there are some guys, like, some things that we need to do. And it, it's been a blessing to know that, you know, if ministry starts at home, then we need to get this tabernacle done in, in sick condition first. And it's a good thing. And I enjoyed the teaching. Amen. And that's a blessing. Amen. Amen. I enjoyed the teaching too. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I was just, um, what stuck out to me was when Elder Sarita was talking about building our spirit man and how we have to constantly seek God in order for our strength to increase and to help us get out of where we were before and how we should always acknowledge God and how there are continual things that we can pray for um because it's an encouragement when God shows us at random times throughout our daily lives his promises each day he gives us a reason to thank him for something yes. so we have to really pay attention to the changes or manifestations that are caught occur in our lives or even in other people's lives or the things that we prayed for or even if we didn't pray for it, but, you know, secretly, wow, I really wanted this, but I didn't even know I wanted that. Right. Anything that God brings to pass, it's important to acknowledge him and thank him. So, you know, I agree with the fact that there's always something that we can pray for, whether it's pertaining to ourselves or others or things. We can pray to God or talk to him or thank him for pretty much everything. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. That's yeah. wonderful. Amen. Anybody else? Yes. Good evening. Good evening. God bless you, Prophetess Lazarus. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Wonderful. I, I enjoy what I heard and what, what stuck out to me was um, the words passion. You know, it kept repeating that I remember when, at the time when we met, how I was hurt like a sick puppy and I wasn't even able to pray anymore. And I, I, I told you many times how much I thank God for you 
And that was a time when I got acquainted to the, the passage of scripture that talks about um, Elijah's passion, that he was a man just like us, yes. and he prayed. Mm-hmm. And I learned to channel all the passion, everything that was inside of me, whether it was anger, fear, doubt, um, self-esteem, whatever. I I believe Elijah wrestled with all of those, and mm-hmm. I learned to channel all those passion into prayer. And what helped me the most was praying in tongues. And yes. whenever I was overcome by something, anything, I just began praying in tongues. Mm-hmm. And it could go on for an hour or two. And that really built me up. Yes. It built me up. So I, I just wanted to put it out there also that um, I don't think it's unique to me. I think, you know, maybe many others um, have done it. But whenever we also begin to get overcome by emotions and we don't know what to do with them, mm-hmm. as long as we have that heavenly language, we can pour all those emotions into it. And yes. there are breakthroughs, things that could happen even at that time in prayer. And because we are not praying in our understanding, even the Holy Spirit can impart things to us that yes. we least expect. Amen. Absolutely. And, and so I was... I think that that is awesome, and and that's that's definitely the the next you know that's one of the other dimensions that we didn't even get the chance to even get into, um, because of us you know dealing with the fact that this is um, you know we were just trying to get that foundation, but that is so right. And the scripture tells us that to pray in the spirit and with our understanding, and so um, you know we're supposed to come to God with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. The scripture tells us, and so there is a place where we can come against those things that the enemy um you know may be fighting us with we may not even know how to articulate those things properly but when we get in the spirit and begin to pray in the spirit the spirit the bible tells us that the spirit helps our infirmities because we don't know what to pray for as we are to and so we have to sometimes do exactly that um there are times where i don't say a word in english don't know what i'm saying to god but i just know i need to pray in the holy ghost and just let god you know what i'm saying guide my prayer and then from there you know let him pick up you know and lead me into whatever else he wants me to do and there are times that we will definitely definitely have to do that that is one of our that's one of our tools or resources that we can use in intercession is praying in the spirit. And so that is definitely, definitely a great point. We need to be able to um, do that. We need to be able to understand um, that us being able to do that moves us beyond our intellect. You know what I'm saying? It moves us beyond our own affections. It moves us beyond what we know how to ask for ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And and then this is actually, it can act as a springboard for those other gifts to start flowing. You know what I'm saying? Because we're, we're already in the spirit. We're, we're pushing ourselves in the spirit. And so now as we're, we are, you know, reaching out in the spirit, God can begin to speak to us. He can begin to, you know, move on us and, and give us his instruction and his his direction you know what i'm saying and so it's it has a great impact on our inner man when we begin to pray in the spirit you know and 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 just get out of ourselves and not put our own words in what we you know what it is that we are praying for at the time you know and so it's that is a great and effective tool that we need to use um as believers uh to be able to exercise that and those verses that i was talking about um First Corinthians 14, 14 and 15 tells us about um, praying in the spirit or singing in the spirit and with our understanding um, and about us singing with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and making a melody with our, in our heart unto the Lord. That's Colossians 3 and 16. And so those verses, you know. Um, though we have, we have the, we have the, what's the word I want to use? We have the, the blueprint, you know what I'm saying? And we just need to use it. We, we need to use it. Amen. We definitely need to use that. Praise God. Anybody else want to say anything? Hallelujah. Amen. So we thank God. Amen. We appreciate the Lord. Amen. For the lesson. Those of you who don't have the notes, I'm sure I have them on disc. So if you would like to have a copy of the notes that we went over for this past month um, about... Um, 
how to develop a strong prayer life and then how to pray read the word uh, we can get those emailed to you so just inbox me or um send me a message or whatever and i'll make sure that you get a copy of the things that has been taught or uh, whatever so that you can have a copy of that and i'm just grateful to the lord for this time thank god for elder bradley amen and the teaching on this month amen and just um availing herself and just allowing god to have his way and and just even as we get ready to close out just want to encourage you all let us meditate on these things that we heard because this intercession this setting ourselves in the place with god this is us partnering with God and agreeing with him by us coming together in, 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 um, intercession. This is for God to speak to our hearts and move on our hearts so that when we speak to him, he begins to pour things out. He begins to, you know, pour his desires in us. He begins to deepen our relationship with him. He can deal with, you know, the things that's going on around us by, by dealing with our hearts and causing us to intercede for them and intercede for the people, intercede for our cities, for our nation. You know what I'm saying? And and just um, it's an opportunity for us to grow in our relationship with him. You know, we're partnering with him that we want. We want to be able to see God establish the kingdom of God on earth through us praying, through us praying his will into the earth. We know we got to get our will out of the way. But this right here, and we talked a little bit about it. I think we hit on it in the beginning about our identity as the bride of Christ. This is the cry of the bride. We want to see his kingdom come. Even so, come Lord Jesus. This is our desire. And so as we get in prayer and we, we position ourselves in intercession, we set ourselves up so that God can use us to pray his will into the earth so that we can partner with him in prayer and believe him for a move and pray for a move of God and that our hearts will be sensitive to his moving so we can be used by him because we can win souls we can you know break down barriers you know move out any uh hindrances or issues or situations that are in our way you know and we you know and I know that you guys often hear me say I agree with God I just I agree with God without intercession we agree with him meaning that whatever he said whatever he promised I'm standing in agreement with him and whatever God desires to do that's what I desire him to do whatever God is declaring that's what I want to declare whatever God is speaking that's what I want to speak you know what I'm saying and so we want his will to be our will his desires to be our desires and in and through intercession we that's how we position ourselves through this intimacy don't give up your sacred time don't get don't don't commit your sacred time to nothing and nobody else other than God, if you set that side, that time aside, you carve that out. And this is what we was, you know, that's from the first part of the lesson that she was teaching. You know, don't let nobody, nothing get in the way of that sacred time. This is your appointment with God. Make sure you keep it so that your heart stays tender before God so that you can hear him so that your heart is moved by the things that move him. Amen. And so we just thank God for the, the teaching on prayer. And then maybe at some later date, we'll dig in further and deal with the watchmen. We'll dig in further and deal with, you know, um, the, the prophetic side and the warfare side, you know what I'm saying? Of, of, um, intercession and really digging deep into the different uh, realms of prayer you know um, occultic warfare and, and um, ground level warfare and and you know warfare that takes place in the air we can go through all you know some of those things we deal with that you know another time but we thank God for setting the pace and, and giving us the foundation that we need so that we can build our you know, intimacy in our prayer lives with him. So thank God. We appreciate the Lord for all you that's online. We appreciate the Lord for you, Elder Bradley. Thank you for letting the Lord use you. Thank you for, for being um, obedient to teach the lesson. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and just letting the Lord have his way. Amen. We praise God. And so at this time, amen, we're going to get ready to close out. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're going to, um, um, just be able to, and we thank God because this, this is recorded. And so those that may be listening over on speaker, they'll be able to hear it. Amen. I told, um, uh, one of the sisters that I would post it so that she could hear it as well. Amen. And so we just want to be able to let this word be a blessing 
to those that are listening. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We magnify you, God, for this teaching. We thank you for all that has been imparted. We pray for the teacher. We pray, God, that you would encourage our heart. Keep our heart, God, encouraged and strengthened, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the things, God, that she have shared. Thank you, Father, for allowing her to be obedient to your word, to share the word on tonight, God. Hallelujah, God. And even throughout the 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 entirety of the lesson. And Father, I pray that everything that we have received, that we would not let one word fall to the ground, but that we would be doers of this word, that we would, Lord, carve out our time for you, that we would pray your word, oh God, and declare your word, that we would pray in the spirit and without understanding, that we would pray, oh God, according to those prayer lists that you would give us, that God, we would journal those things, God, that you are speaking to us, that we will war a good warfare, oh God, by the prophecies and the words that you have spoken over us, God, that we would pray, oh God, over different people and places and pray, oh God, those prayers of petition in the name of Jesus, and God, we just give you glory and honor and praise for all that you're doing and all that you're going to continue to do. Bless even those that were listening by the stream, oh God, we pray that you encourage their hearts strengthen them make a way for them god and keep them oh god strengthened and encouraged by your word in jesus name we pray amen amen thank god for everyone have a blessed night hallelujah amen and we'll meet next time whenever next time is going to be maybe sunday lord willing hallelujah god bless you